Okay, here we have a, a 2000 Infinity I-30. Uh, what we had need to do is we need to change the, uh, the lower ball joint on this particular car. And as you can see, the lower ball joint is right here in the bottom of the steering uh, knuckle itself. Um, they t according to the, uh, to the service manual, this is not a serviceable item. You've got to change the control arm, but I'm going to show you how you can change just the ball joint without changing the entire control arm. Uh, all you need is a, a press to, uh, to press it out and to press the new one back in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to get this out of the car is uh, we're going to disconnect the, the lower ball joint. We're going to take this car to pin out right here and we're going to take this nut off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to disconnect the uh, lower part of the uh, stabilizer link away from the control arm. And last, we're going to come underneath here and we're going to unbolt the lower control arm where it mounts up to the body of the car. If you have air power uh, tools, you can use air. If not, you can do it with just a, uh, a breaker bar and, uh, you know, the ratchet. So uh, let me show you how it, uh, how it goes. Okay, remember the first thing I said is we're going to take that, uh, we're going to take out that carter pin. So we just got up in there with a pair of, uh, of pliers. And we just straighten that pin out. And we pull it out of the control, I mean the, the lower ball joint, just take the pin out. Next thing we're going to do is, you're not going to be able to get on here with the box wrench. So you're going to have to use the open end of a wrench to lower, to loosen the ball joint. So you just put the uh, the wrench onto the ball joint. I show you. Okay, and we're just gonna break it loose. Most of the time, they'll they'll come loose unless it's pretty uh, pretty rusted. All right, then we can take the ball joint nut off. If you can get it all the way off, fine. Take it totally out. A lot of times you will not be able to get it all the way out because as you turn it up, the nut is going to hit into the, uh, into the axle here. So we'll just take it out as far as we can, uh, we can get it out. Sorry about the light. Let's see if this will help at all. Never fails, always turns the opposite direction that you want it in. Okay, and as you can see, what happens is the nut, when you back it out, it comes up and it hits right into the lower part of the axle, so you won't be able to get the nut off all the way. But we're going to get in here with the fork right now, and we're going to separate it. So let me put you down, and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, now if we have that disconnected there. We're going to take a piece. It's like a, it's a fork that you uh, that you can use to knock the ball joint uh, out of the uh, the lower part of the knuckle. So let me just put that in there. We'll knock it out and uh, we'll go from there with it. Comes out fairly easy. You just tap the fork in and you hit it a couple of times and it breaks it loose. And then once you break it loose, you can just unscrew the nut right off of the uh, right off of the lower ball joint. Right. Once we have that apart, 
we're going to disconnect the, uh, the stabilizer link where it connects onto the, uh, to the control arm. And the way we do that is if you have an air, power, air, air gun to shoot it off, you can use air. got to do is the uh, the back of the uh, stabilizer link is a, a little 14 millimeter nut and you put the wrench on it and just hold it and you shoot the nut off on the other side Disconnected. You can just push this out of the way like that, and now we're going to disconnect the uh, the lower part of the control arm where it mounts onto the uh, to the frame of the car. See a little bit better there what I'm doing. All right. and I'm going to show you how to uh, remove the ball joint from the control arm. Okay. Now that we have everything apart, what, what you know you got to do is you got to get this rubber boot off the top here. So you just take a razor blade and just cut the boot off just so you can uh, see what you're doing in there. Opens it up a little bit more for you. And as you can see, the, uh, the ball joint itself is no good. All right, so you're going to need a pair of snap ring pliers to get this ring off, which is right here. And what you do is you put these little teeth directly into it, and you squeeze it, and it opens up the snap ring. Squeeze the snap ring, it pulls it open, and you just get in here with a screwdriver underneath it, and you just pry the snap ring off like that, comes right off. And what we're going to do, we're going to knock this ball joint out. There's two ways you can do it. You can use a press to do it, or you can do it the way I usually do it. I'll show you. comfortable doing it, you just hold it over something, you knock the ball joint straight out. I don't do it that way, I have a, a kit that I use to press it out. I'll show you how I usually do it. And this will press the joint, this will just press it right straight out. So this piece we're going to push out.
can just take that. As you heard, the ball is really popped out. Now we'll open up the vise, the press, take everything out. The joint is out, and uh, now I'll get the uh, I'll get the new one, and I'll show you how we uh, press it back in. Let me just put some stuff away, and I'll get right back. Okay, now that we have the new ball joint, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of grease on here so that it slides into the uh, control arm a little bit easier without binding up. So we'll just put a little bit of uh, any kind of grease. I use uh, real bearing grease, but any kind will do. All right, now you remember, you remember how we took the ball joint out. Um, we know that the ball joint cannot go in this way. We have to put it in the way we took it out, which is like this here. So uh, I'll show you how that goes. Well, basically what we're going to do is we're going to use this to push the joint in to the to the fitting. And then what we're going to do, over the top of the joint right here, we're going to put this on here. And this over the top of it. And then we're going to push it into where it belongs. So uh, let's get started on it. I'll we'll show you how it goes. Okay. Push the joint in all the way. Let me set this up and I'll show you how it goes once I have it all set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the, the ball joint into the frame this way right here all the way in with this press and then the stem itself is going to push up through here so that it has room to, uh, to go in. So uh, let me just do that and I'll show you how it goes. Turned all the way in. We just uh, want to make sure that it's seated all the way in here. Make sure that it's flush up against the uh, lower control arm itself. If it is, then you take it and you put your snap ring back on and take all this stuff off. Let me just show you this real quick. Make sure that the ball joint is seated all the way up inside here so it's flush. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our snap ring and we're going to install the snap ring back into that groove right up in there. So I'll show you how that's done. You just take your pliers, the snap ring pliers, and you grab the, uh, the snap ring. Pliers go in there like that. And you just squeeze it. Put it over the top, and it goes right down into the groove where it holds it in place. All right? 
next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the grease fitting right back in there. Very simple. Just screw the fitting in and tighten it in with a wrench. What I always do is whenever I install the grease fitting, I always have it facing to the rear of the car. A little bit easier to, uh, to work on. Now you remember that the uh, control arm was up this way here. So for that fitting to be facing towards the rear, it's got to be like that. That you can always change when you get it back into the car. It's not a big deal. So let's get back over by the car and I'll show you how to put it back in. Everything we'll put back together in here. What we're going to do first, we're going to, before we bolt this back up into the into here where it belongs, we're just going to catch this side here. We're going to take the nut for the ball joint and screw it on because once it goes up there later, it's going to be a little more difficult to get in there. So you just tighten it in by hand. catch this back up in here. We're going to catch all the bolts before we tighten anything up. We're just going to catch them all one at a time. Just get them caught. Just going to catch them all by hand and tighten them all up later on. Whenever I put them in, I always put a little bit of grease on them because everything is pretty rusty. going to do is we're just going to tighten up this ball joint right on the bottom right down here. We'll tighten that nut up until it's tight and we have the car pin that's going to go through. So let me tighten it up and I'll show you.
All right. That's what I was doing is catching that carter pin right inside there and then bend these tabs down so it doesn't touch up into the ABS sensor or catch into the boot itself. All right, so now we have the ball joint is tight, the carter pin is through, the grease fitting is in, everything underneath here, all four of these are tightened up, these are tightened up, that's it, we're good to go. We're just going to, with the lower control arm anyway, now we're going to install our stabilizer link that we took out right here and uh, I'll show you how that goes. Okay, now what we're going to do, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to tighten up the uh, stabilizer link, which is mounted right in here. You get on here with the wrench, and you just hold the inner part tight while you uh, go around to the other side. Then you shoot it on with an air gun, or you can do it by hand, whichever. Again, if you don't have an air gun, you can, uh, you can just get on it with a ratchet too, and do the same thing, tighten it up with a ratchet and a long extension, and you'll be fine. All right, last thing we're going to do before we wrap this job up is remember what I told you about uh, I wanted to have the grease fitting always face into the back of the vehicle. So the grease fitting is face to the back of the vehicle. We're going to put some grease in the joint, and that's it. All set. So uh, you can change just the ball joint without having to change the entire control arm. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Good luck.